Four men have been charged as suspects in last Friday's attack on a Moscow-area concert hall. And Wyoming has joined nearly two dozen other states in banning gender-affirming care for minors. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. Israel's defense minister is in Washington today. He's asking the Biden administration for more weapons for Israel's offensive in Gaza and potential war with Hezbollah in Lebanon. But some Democratic lawmakers are urging President Biden to withhold military aid because of Israeli restrictions on humanitarian aid to Gaza. NPR's Daniel Estrin reports from Tel Aviv. Israeli Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant is meeting Secretary of State Antony Blinken and other top U.S. officials. He says he'll seek to preserve Israel's ability to obtain munitions as Israel presses on with its goal to defeat Hamas in Gaza and to prepare for potential war with Hezbollah. But the rift between the Biden administration and Israel is widening. The U.S. opposes Israel's plans for a military offensive in Rafah, where more than a million people are sheltering. It says Israel needs to do more to allow aid into Gaza, where there's extreme hunger. Groups of Democratic senators and House representatives have written to President Biden that Israel is not complying with a U.S. law that requires Israel as a recipient of military aid not to restrict the delivery of humanitarian aid. Daniel Estrin, NPR News, Tel Aviv. Russian authorities have charged four men as suspects in last Friday's terror attack on a Moscow-area concert hall. It killed at least 137 people. The suspects all pleaded guilty in court, but NPR's Charles Main says they showed signs of duress and torture. One of the accused was brought in a wheelchair, not even conscious. Uh, another showed up with a bandage on his ear after his interrogator cut off a portion of it with a knife. Uh, we know because the authorities released a video. Uh, meanwhile, others had swollen faces with bruises and cuts. So taking all of that into account, uh, there certainly will be those who question the confessions they gave. NPR's Charles Maines reporting. An affiliate of ISIS has claimed responsibility for the Moscow attack, but the Kremlin insists, without proof, that Ukraine was involved. Ukraine denies this. Wyoming Republican Governor Mark Gordon has signed a law banning gender-affirming medical care for minors. Wyoming Public Radio's Chris Clements reports the state joins nearly two dozen others with similar bans. The ban outlaws gender-affirming surgeries for Wyoming youth, even though those surgeries aren't performed in the state. It also bans other forms of gender-affirming care that physicians broadly agree can be crucial to helping an already vulnerable population. Brittany Brown is an administrator at a clinic in Casper that provides trans patients with some kinds of gender-affirming care. Here she is before the decision was handed down. It's so ironic to me that in the same session, that passed a bill affirming parent rights, they now want to step in and say, but not that one. All the rights except the one about your child's medical care. It's possible that Wyoming's ban could face a court challenge, similar to other states like Oklahoma, where a ban has been appealed to the Tenth Circuit. For NPR News, I'm Chris Clements in Laramie. They're down to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament, NPR's Becky Sullivan reports. In the men's tournament, all four one seeds and all four two seeds have made it out of the opening weekend. That includes top seeds Connecticut, Purdue, North Carolina, and Houston, who survived a Sunday night overtime thriller to advance. It's the first time since 2019 that the top eight teams have all gotten this far. Upsets have gotten more common in recent years, but this tournament has bucked that trend. The only team left seeded lower than six is North Carolina State, an 11 seed. In the women's event, top overall team South Carolina has won both their games by about 50 points en route to the Sweet 16. There, they'll be joined by fellow one seed Texas. The other two top seeds, Iowa and USC, each play on Monday night for their shot at advancing. Becky Sullivan, NPR News. I'm Corva Coleman, NPR News.